Good evening, the time is now 6.30. I'd like to call this meeting to order. If you will please stand and join me.
will probably cost between $150,000 to $200,000. That's what good facilities directors make. But with that salary comes probably, they can save a million to a million and a half dollars if the school system is willing to listen to what they have to say. A good facilities director, I've done facilities in my, in my background, I'll lay this holes in the Veritas um, report. If you look at the numbers of the population that they put in some of the schools, I'll give you an example. The high school on the budget says 503 kids, and the Veritas report says 533. Which one's right? I'm going to say the budget. Okay? So some of the things in the report don't match, which superintendent I will send you an email on so I'm going to respond to that exact statement in a minute. Okay? And so there's just things. But the point is, is, there's nobody in this town right now how we can put in a $1.6 million increase across the board. There's elderly people who are just getting by. You have single parents just getting by. You have families who are together who are just getting by. And yet, we want to add another tax increase on them. Last year, my, my mortgage went up $150 from last year's tax increase. Some of that was caused by the fact that they were late and hitting me with my tax increase on my mortgage, but my taxes went up $100. So when I got my bill in February, my, my mortgage went up 150 I can afford it. But there are many families, many elderly in this town that cannot. You know, I listened to the police department. I watched all the videos. Unfortunately, I couldn't come to the police department. I couldn't come to the board, but I watched all the videos. To, to listen to the police department say that they can't get, or, you know, the, the police have to buy their own vests, buy their own uniforms. And I look at the number, I'll be honest with you, I think that number's too small. I think that's something, every two years, it should be a capital investment out of the fund balance. If this, I'm going to go around the number, 20 offices, and they cost $1,000 each year, there should be $20,000 out of the fund balance every year to buy new vests for the offices. You know, this year I see there's no car up there. I've always been a proponent that there should be at least one car every year bought for the police department out of the fund balance. This year I see it's cut. So again, I'm not against anti-spending. I'm for smart spending. I'm not to just see, hey, Kevin's done a great job. He's got a lot of revenue coming in this coming year. And that's how some of this increase can actually be afforded. Otherwise, we'd be looking at everybody having a zero spending increase but because the revenue is being increased so much, you're going to get some good increases in both budgets. I'm not against the school you know, getting a million dollars. 1.8, I think, is too high. But we need, to, we need to be realistic on what we're going to push back on the, on the taxpayers. And that's all I'm asking is that you guys consider that. You're asking for a $1.6 million increase in tax money from the taxpayers. That's, you know it's going to get voted down. I mean, I've been doing this, I've been on the Board of Finance, I've been voting for a long time, 1.6 million is never going to fly in this town. And you're going to be right back here after that second weekend, after that second Monday in May, you're going to be doing this all over again. Scrambling, looking to see. If they see some movement now, there's a better chance of it passing. Thank you. Thank you. Linda has a question. Sure. Actually, I have two or three. Okay. Um, you said your mortgage went up $100 a month. Was that? that my mortgage was went up 150 because they didn't. Was I, that my, all taxes? My tax bill went up $100. My insurance, I've changed the action, my insurance went down. Uh huh. It went up $100 a month. And uh, um, if we left the budget flat, um, as proposed, mm -hmm. do you know how much your mortgage would go up? $35. Mm -hmm. And you'd say, well, um, if, if people if people retort with, well, you can cut thirty five dollars out of my budget. Okay. Is that that's a month? Yes. So thirty five times yes. twelve. It's gonna go. It's gonna go up about four hundred dollars. And again, I can afford it. I can tell you, my daughter, who's a single mother of three kids, hers won't go up that much, but she got hit already the last time, and you know, another twenty dollars in her budget doesn't fly. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Anyone 
Betty and Summa, 18 Henry Drive, Musa. Uh, thank you for this explanation of the town budget. Um, the increase at 0.88, I still think is a little too high, so I'd like that the finance board and all the departments take a look at where they can trim a few dollars here. I'm appealing to the Board of Finance tonight to please remember the, the need to keep the tax rate at its current level, if possible. I am not sure if the 2023-24 town revenue has increased. And if it has, please do not look at the additional monies as something you must spend. Save it, be wise and sensible on these proposed budgets. I want to address the education budget. I know Mr. Brenton is here. He's not going to like what I have to say. I spent many years on the Board of Education. The problem with federal dollars, they're gone. We knew that. We knew that the ESRA funds, COVID money, all was going to disappear. Yet nobody did anything about it, little by little by little. That is the problem when you accept federal dollars. And I know that most school districts need the federal dollars. But they do disappear. Eventually they dry up. Educators love to spend these funds on all sorts, especially personnel. And then technology and all other areas. The funds are gone. And they try to move that money, especially personnel, back into the regular budget, which then inflates the budget. When people are hired under a federal grant, state grant, they are told, or they should be told, that their position is funded under grant money. When the grant money is gone, the position should be gone. It is time to face some layoffs and sunsets of programs. The Hartford Public Schools are not filling vacancies and they're having layoffs. Uh, the new Sikorsky did not get a federal um, bid contract. They're laid off. We never look at or assess how much personnel we have and what their usefulness is and is there time to reduce that workforce. Plainfield school student population, to my knowledge, when I was on the board of ed, has not increased. The high school really is, has a much bigger capacity than 500 and some odd students. I would ask the finance board this year, last year you sort of did not make decisions and left it to the public. I'm asking the finance board this year some questions regarding the huge increases in why that education budget has been developed in such a way. One me measure, our student performance. What have the schools, how have the schools performed recently? Has there been some major increases? They will argue, yes, there has been. I'm not so sure. Our underperforming, our schools are underperforming, or if they are underperforming, why is more money each year being made? Why is more money each year not making a difference? I know that salaries, electricity, benefits increase every year. I understand that. But there needs to be a way to offset those increases in a non-judgmental, harsh way for the district and its budget. The taxpayer does this with their own annual budgets. We all make concessions somewhere along the line. Very simply, we, we shop in different places. We use coupons, whatever. But the school system needs to sharpen their pencil and to zero in on that budget. I spent 37 years in education. I've had a variety of jobs. I know what can go on. Zero-based budgeting needs to start. And you start from scratch and not build out all the time. It is time to teach the basics. 
and to stop unfunded state and federal mandates, which add more to the budget and produce, in my mind, and in my estimation and evaluation, not very much productivity. Thank you. Mike Brown, Street Plainfield. Uh, I'm Plainfield. I'm here as a private citizen, not as a member of uh, any particular board or uh, committee. Uh, there is certainly one thing that I will agree with Dr. Suma on, and that is that uh, we do need to stop the unfunded mandates that we are getting pressed on from the state and federal governments, but unfortunately, um, here in this room, we don't have much choice on. Uh, for the past couple of years, I've stood in this very same spot and reviewed the same work, reckless and irresponsible. And that's what I feel is going on when we continue year after year after year to make more and more cuts to the education budget. We have, to Mr. Charles, uh, as he said, uh, some of the lowest paid parents uh, around here. And we have some of the lowest paid teachers around here. Some of the lowest paid, if not the lowest paid, superintendent around here. And fellow administrators. Uh, or is it the union? I'm, I'm not sure which it is, but uh, we are hemorrhaging teachers, we are hemorrhaging police officers, and those are two things that I certainly care about most in this town, and two of the things that we should be uh, uh, contributing to the best. Um, as far as the ESSER funds, we have once again stood in this very same spot year after year. As soon as that ARP ESSER funds started coming in, started mentioning the fiscal cliff that we were approaching. And last year, rapidly approaching the fiscal cliff. We have gone over that fiscal cliff. Um, I, for one, do not feel that our students and teachers should be the one um, being cut on. Uh, I hate to see programs continuously being reduced in our school. The more that we do that, the more that we are going to lose students to out of town schools. And we are still going to be paying for their education, but we are going to be paying for their education elsewhere. Uh, as, as we all know, uh, there is the option to forward the budgets as presented this evening to the town. The town absolutely has the right to vote on that, and as we have done in years past, we can certainly be uh, surprised and mindful of what the actual people of this town want to do rather than a small handful. Thank you. Anyone else? comments and just respond to some pieces and then if people have questions afterward I can follow up. Uh, first and foremost I'd like to speak to uh, questions on the Bureau of Veritas reports. Uh, we've presented the Bureau of Veritas reports uh, both preliminary at our posted capital improvement meeting and publicly in a meeting that was Zoom which some of the members of the Board of Finance attended. I appreciate you for that. And then we discussed them publicly in the last Board of Education meeting. We did speak to in those pieces, elements like student enrollment, like Mr. Charles would have mentioned. Understand that student enrollment, when presented in the budget, is a projection. That projection is done without knowing how many eighth grade students are choosing to come to the high school and without knowing how many Sterling students are choosing to come to the high school. We do our Sterling projection based on an average. We originally budgeted, and uh, we've made adjustments, which I've shared with the town. We originally budgeted for 12 to 14 Sterling eighth graders. A lot of good things happening at the high school. We have 22 Sterling 8th graders coming. That increases our number. We generally uh, uh, project a large number of students leaving for Ellis Tech, Wyndham Tech. This year that number is lower than it's been in previous years. As of right now, we only have 30 students uh, who are projected to go to those schools. We know we'll lose a few to Killingby Boag, and we may lose one to QBMC. But at this time, we have the largest incoming freshman class over the last four years projected right now. Uh, I think that's because of good things happening at the high school, art, music, sports, what's happening in the classrooms. Um, 
If anyone has a question about a number in the Bureau of Veritas report or any number in any of the pieces, I ask you to please first start by contacting central office and asking. I'm always happy to speak to those things. If you look at our student enrollment numbers, the state counts the numbers multiple times. You'll see a different number October 1 than you'll see December 1. Students move in and out of district. I've had people say, why does it say there's 83 third graders in one report and the next report says 89? Because those reports are two different times. And a family moved into town or a family moved out of town. In fact, we have people who have sat behind that table who have moved in or out of town and caused those student numbers to change. But those student numbers are accurate. When we publish them, if we need to, I can always publish them with dates on account. Second thing I'd like to speak to is comments related to the performance of the schools. Uh, as I presented at our board meetings and as I mentioned here in the last year, we had two of our elementary schools be named by the state of Connecticut as schools of distinction. That's Shepherd Hill Elementary and Plainfield Memorial School. Plainfield Memorial Schools were so great that the state of Connecticut, the Department of Education came out to Plainfield Memorial, asked to have a session with them, they made it a model school. Plainfield Memorial School has traveled to Hartford and spoken on the state floor about what they're doing in literacy. Our principal and our literacy coordinator were the only administrator and teacher in the state of Connecticut who were at the Right to Read Summit, which was a national summit in the state of, hosted in the state of Connecticut speaking about what's happening there. There are good things happening in the performance of our schools. Finally, when we speak to the contractual numbers in the ER bus, I may actually bring up Mr. Sugarman, but every year when we've done our presentations, as Mr. Grove said, we've made cuts of the positions that are in the art bus. In the budget binders that you have, I specifically identify a guidance counselor, a music teacher, tech ed teachers that have been in the art bus or that are not in this budget. We did not include them in this budget and increase the number of staff. There is less staff in this budget than the budget that I gave you two years ago. There's less administrators. There is less overall staff. As I noted, the largest increase related to art busser was the last year was the last year we supplanted transportation costs, which we were allowed to do. We talked about that very publicly. That was $250,000. Um, to speak a little more to the staff and grants, I'm going to ask Mr. Sugarman, the assistant superintendent, who manages our grant, to uh, expand on that a little further. Thank you. Hello, I'm Scott Sherman, Assistant Superintendent from Pensacola Public Schools. You know, I, I think part of the conversation with the Arbesser and all of our grant funding that we get, um, you know, we saw what was going to happen with the Arbesser funding once we got it. We knew what was going to happen. So what we've been starting to do over the past couple of years is positions that we needed to keep as a school district to operate. We started to move those positions on other grants over the course of multiple years, so it wasn't one at a time. Right, so what we started to do is we removed positions onto Title I grant, which is an entitlement grant that we get on an annual basis for, I don't know how long districts have received the Title I grant to pay to that grant. We started to move positions onto that grant and to our, our alliance grant. So we started to take those salaries off of our BESSER, transfer them onto other grants, and only very few actually went on to the local, but we accounted for that with other changes, our understanding that we did with programs. So I think just the narrative of like our ESSER held $600,000 worth of salaries, and now that's gone, so $600,000 is on local, that narrative is, is not a true narrative to be talking about. We've been transferring a significant portion of our uh, grant funds that were on our ESSER on other grants that we get on an annual basis for years. It's not like an ARP ESSER grant that's a three-year life, it's an annual life that we're going to have in those grants. And we've been well prepared for this to, to come to make that transfer happen. So it's something that we presented at the Board of Ed, and we have a chart of what salaries and what personnel is on grants and where they exist and how much is there. And so we've been making those changes, uh, I would say, for the better part of the past two and a half years. Good evening, Jenny Kepsikevich, 265 Gender Road. I learned a valuable lesson during last budget season when not enough community spoke at these meetings to let the Board of Finance know how we're all feeling. 
often we spend time sitting in our homes and not articulating um, the pros and cons. And so I just want to take a moment tonight to say that, um, I think we've heard enough about the board, but I want to spend some time on the town budget side. Yes, everything costs more money. Yes, it is, it's happening to everybody. But that doesn't mean we need to cut, cut things, cut programs. I appreciate when my roads are plowed. I appreciate when the roads are maintained. Um, these are essentials that need to happen in our town. So we have to be very cautious if we consider cutting things in the future. And I know that that can happen when not enough people speak up early. The point that I want to really hit home is our police department. We need to continue to fully fund them. They need to feel supported by the community that they are working in because my number one concern is my safety in my town. And I know that my police department is doing the very best they can with the budget that they are given. And nothing should be cut from our police budget.
out front is looking to put up a billboard there, so it would have to go in front of uh, Zoning Board of Appeals and also go in front of Planning and Zoning. What you'll see in front, in front of you is the company called Outfront, and what they were looking to lease uh, a billboard by recreating it and putting it up there at the uh, highway garage. And the lease includes uh, years 1 through 5 for 65,500, 6 through 10, 72, 50, 11 through 15, 79,225, and uh, years 16 through 20 is 87,180. Uh, it would be remiss of me if I didn't mention in your packet, you would see this current year's budget on the front page. Take a look at this year's current budget on the front page and you will notice that there's a lease item right now for the cell tower. The cell tower would get 32.5 the lease. So the proposal here is if this goes forward, would more than double what we're looking for for revenue coming in for, instead of the cell tower, we'll go towards the billboard. So that, that those two items do require you to say your name to to move forward in front of the public and let the public go to the town meeting. The reason why you probably set on your new business for the other ones is because we typically on having a town meeting on June 5th to go through our ordinances uh, because there's many, many typos, probably about three and a half pages of typos. Um, and there's a way we can also uh, sunset some of the ordinances which are no longer valid. Um, I don't go through all of them with you, but I can give you an example. Ordinance number four says no alcohol to be served on a Sunday. So those are the type of things we've been working on cleaning up. We have about nine or ten of those. So we have planned on having a June 5th meeting for those ordinances. I'm coming in front of you to discuss um, these other two. Uh, just for fill in and again go back to the original front page you had there. The anticipation of gaining revenue from the sale of a property uh, is one thing, but we also had a sale of a property back in the year 2008 in January. In your packet, you might see that there's a Board of Finance minutes way back then talking about the sale of the, uh, uh, what was at the time, it was the uh, doctor's offices off of Plainfield Road. Uh, the sale was for 120 to 122 Plainfield Road. At that time, it was $389,000. There was actually no vote to earmark anything at that point. So it's been sitting in an account separately. Um, it's right now has earned the interest to the, to the total of $510,000. My plan was to utilize the $660,000 from the sale of the cell tower, plus uh, earmarking the monies from that sale of the properties way back then, and putting it towards the Lions Park and getting it all done in one shot. There's major advantages to doing it that way. One is, uh, right now we've gone, to, we've gone to the point of going to a steep print, and you have to have a matching fund with a steep print. So every time you have a matching fund, you usually would have to have requests for the town of Plainfield to have a town meeting and referendum of a certain value to allocate monies out of the fund balance. So if I was to do this project this way, we wouldn't have to do that. We would actually just utilize those monies to be able to have that entire project done in one shot. The other good thing about that is if we uh, complete the project at the Lions Park and all in one shot, and we have monies left over, we can go into the fund balance. You mentioned that there's two other boards that have to the board of selectmen have already voted to go bring it forward. For now, in front of you, you have to set the board. Okay. If you so do incline to allow the public to discuss this at a town meeting, those two items will be brought forth to the town meeting. One is the sale of the cell tower, and the other one is the lease of a new billboard. All right. When does P and Z come into play? P and Z would have to. We have to vote on doing that. The P and Z, uh, P and Z approval. I might even have to move one of them. I know definitely the uh, sale of the cell tower would be could be done right away. Uh, P and Z would be the one where we just have to go in front of P and Z, so I might have to move that one in particular to a different date. But it was basically putting your approval, stamp of approval, to move forward to the public. Any other questions from the board? I got a couple. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. In our proposed budget, you have for the lease of the electronic billboard, you're counting on a $115,500? Yes. But according to the lease agreement, it's only $6,500. Right. If you take a look at the lease agreement, they're also um, on the first year. As soon as they turn the switch on, yep. they're giving an additional $50,000 check. That's why the two combined is $150,000. Okay. Do we have to do anything to the sign? I mean, it's updating or... No, they take care of that. There's certain conditions which we would have to have approved, and I think they're in there as well. Talk about certain things that they would not put up on the billboard. 
Plus, I'd be looking to negotiate with them to make it so that we can also put some occasional uh, notifications to the tenant plan build up there as well. Any other questions? Uh, would they be signing the lease for a certain amount of time? And what you see in front of you? It's a 20 year. A 20 year lease? Okay. So, so the billboard makes sense. It's a rather bring the town less tax burden hopefully on the town on the residents. I, I don't know if take a million dollars plus and dump in the line park is fiscally responsible when we're discussing shortfalls in the school scheme systems, possible cuts to budgets. Versus going out to a continued bond of a request for uh, funding from a grant, which again requires what? You're looking at matching rates. Matching rates will require me to come back to the board of finance and ask for money to come out of the fund balance. It just doesn't seem responsible. So Absolutely doesn't seem responsible coming back to the board of finance for, fund, for more money out of the fund balance if it's already taken care of. No, what doesn't seem responsible to me is I know we need a lot of upgrades to buildings that are falling apart. And we're going to dump a million dollars over there that could be going into our fund balance to help offset those projects. What buildings are you talking about? What specific items? We're talking about for the school system. We're talking about going onto a bond. But it's still, are they not matching bonds? No, they're not. Have to pay them bonds right are not matching. Could we not maybe go to bond on one of the buildings and say use that money to offset, and not have to have a bond on? Sean, do you know how long it's been since we've updated the HVAC system at the school, uh, a couple of the schools? I was on the Board of Education in the year 2001. We were talking about the Musa Elementary, I'm sorry, about the Central and also uh, Memorial. Yep. Back then, yep. we haven't done that. We planned this all out where we can actually get rid of the bonds we have right now, running off in a year and a half, and then putting a bond out, which will be a little less than what we're paying right now. Yes, I just think it's... Is that irresponsible? I think it's irresponsible to dump a million dollars when you would, came, you would come to the town last year, or two years ago, whatever it was, and said you're going to get grants to cover all that. We can continue that way if you like, but the idea is if you don't, if you want to continue going after grants and then having to ask you again and again and again for money, matching monies for a bond. You made it sound like it was all there, it was ready to go, the grants were in place. No, I said the first phase of it was. There's three phases. You did hear that, right? I don't know, there's so many different stories going around. I can't remember half the time what's going on. Well, all I'm requesting is to be able to put it in front of the public and let the public choose. If, if I may add, everything that Kevin has said is true that we have been in planning for a bond. The high school, which was a $15.6 million bond or $16.5 million bond, I feel like I have a number mixed up there, comes off in 2027. And the intent is to go after DAS grant funding to address major projects in 2027 which would allow us to essentially replace the high school bond with another bond and address a large number of those issues. We've been in communication with that. That actually is in my published capital plan. We've been talking about this for two and a half years. We've invited the chairperson for the Board of Finance so we can understand exactly what was it we're up against. We've had help from, help from Kelly because she told us when the bonds would roll off. It's responsible by making sure that we get the rid of the first bond first and bring it on the second bond. So it wouldn't impact the taxpayers. I believe the bond thought process was also part of the facility study and, uh, and impacted the decision that was made about the ECC building. It did. It played a, it played a part in that. The board of ed in their last board meeting voted to move forward. Uh, having us look to close the BCC and they enabled me to uh, seek out uh, uh, some, uh, seek out a plan and uh, project cost. Any other questions? Kevin, yeah, I've got a question. If we were to approve it and to go forward to a town meeting, would it be just like one proposal that everybody would approve? Or would it be broken out into okay, the sale, approve? the money going into Lions Park would be a separate issue that they would, how would that work? It would, it would be spoken of just like we did tonight. We're talking about what the projects are uh, for the sale of that uh, property. Um, you know, it's still pending the issue of having to go through the Zoning Board of Appeals and also uh, planning and zoning for the other item, which is the billboard. It has to go through those steps. Um, so again, we may have to break out this for, from the June 5th, just for the sale of the cell tower at this point. But the plan, 
would definitely be discussed and, and open for discussion. Okay, so would they meet with the town vote on it that night, or would yep. it just be a discussion about it? So no, we, we had a town vote. Okay, and they would basically be like, yes, we approve the whole thing, or... Yep. Any other questions? Yeah, Kevin. Are you asking us to approve going to the town meeting? Yes, sir. Or approving of this project? Or just, just going to a town meeting and let the public hear what's going on and let them vote on it. Is it one of my duties to address the group in this project? Yes, sir. Yep. If you take a look in section 25, I think it's either C or E. One is for sale and one's for lease, and that's how it, how it works. It allows the board of selectmen to go first. We, we already voted on this, but then it goes to the Board of Finance for their approval to go to town meeting. What would make us say no? Well, I don't know. I, I would think that this is always an opportunity to let the public speak, so I don't know. Well, don't you feel sometimes the public depends on us to help them make the decision? We're sitting here, we're listening to all it is. All right. So shouldn't we then be able to make a, 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 some kind of a statement saying we agree with the project? Or? We don't know, but all we're asking to do here is to move it from somebody else. Just asking to move it forward to the public and then allow the public to hear everything that's going on so they have a, a proper decision to make. Any other questions? We would the money be held until. Like we've done right now, we've had money held into a, a stiff account. So the 660. Okay, would be held in what account? So the sale of the cell tower is what you're talking about? That would, I can hold it in the general fund, a stiff account, and just let it sit there. Like, yeah, one of our bank accounts. Like the account for the um, sale of the 120, 122? That's the medical bill, and that's separate. Yep. Oh, we can put it into a separate account? Yeah. I can put it in the se separate general ledger, separate accounting account. So why is this that's my question? We've had this money sitting someplace from, the, from January 2008. $389,000 is earned interest to give us to a total of $510,000. Um, where has this been all this time? Sitting right there. Uh, I personally didn't know this even existed. It's in your back of your audit book. You have all the separate funds in the back of your audit book. It's listed there. Yeah. Is that part of the security fund balance, basically? Like restricted. Restricted. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like restricted. Yeah. yeah. So we've always known about it. Just yeah. We yeah. just, just didn't identify. Yeah. Right. Okay. It's been in the reports yeah, every always, year. The auditors always look at it. It's always disclosed. Cell tower is already uh, because we have the other set for June fifth. I'd like to have it on the same day. Trying to save some money by having any of the town meetings grouped together. It's a quick way to save some money. So the June fifth would be the town meeting. Yes. If we decide to move forward. Correct. Set on June, you'll set the date. June 5th. Artwork. 
All those in favor of moving this forward to a town meeting, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Thank you. All right, at this time, next item on our agenda is to discuss and act upon the proposed budget for fiscal year 24-25. Uh, we have in front of us the latest that was brought, printed out this afternoon, and it's calling for a 0.88 million increase. So, let me begin by saying, adding a few comments before we get started. Um, a couple of things that have come to light. Um, number one is I have to trust the information that's been presented to me. Um, and one of the things that I find concerning is that 55% um, of our enrollment qualifies for reduced or free lunches because they are considered to be at or below the poverty level. That's astounding. There are no easy answers to this. Um, so what I'd like to do is as we have go forward in our discussions, uh, I had requested certain individuals on the board to do some research on some things. And as we get to those particular points in our discussion, I would like for them to share their findings. But I'm going to begin by recapping what took place last year. Third week of April, we took a look at a budget and we sent it on as it was. May 1st, we had a public hearing. 13 people got up and spoke. May 2nd, we had a special board of ed meeting. And at that point, we made a decision to cut the budget by 650000 to bring us to a mill rate of 24 years. May 15th. We had a town meeting. That budget did not pass. We had cut 650000 and that budget did not pass. On May 15th, we had a second meeting, special board of finance meeting, to set another public hearing. May 17th, we made more cuts. It took us three motions to get to, get to what number we were going to cut. May 22nd, we had a public hearing. And to follow up on your point, five people spoke. May 30th, we had a town meeting. That budget passed. 419 people voted. May 30th, following that vote, we had a special meeting to set the number at 20.79. So the question then becomes, is how do we represent the town and as best we can to come up with a budget that will pass? That's our responsibility. Now, I've heard a few comments tonight that make me think that, oh, you know, maybe this budget could go forward as is. But most of what I've heard from people outside this room is that they don't want another increase. Some of them understand that an increase will come. So we have to do the best we can for the public as a whole. With that being said, I will now entertain other comments from the board. <clears throat> Dean, in what can put a point of what you just said, mm -hmm. that we have a responsibility to bring forward a budget that will be approved by the town. Mm -hmm. the by the town part. It, no, it's and I, I think that 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 No, I mean, that, that's part of why we're here. Because, you know, I will, I will hear people who will talk to me, and you'll hear people who will talk to you. And so we have to come up with a solution to what the budget is going to be. Now, last year, we, set, well, we took the budget as it was proposed, we put it forward, and it did pass. <clears throat> now, I, I know this might be trying to get my attention. The budget was in three points, three sections, and not everything passed. I think the Board of Ed budget, it's the first time the Board of Ed passed, capital passed, but Town General did not. So the budget as a whole did not pass. So, but I'm glad you kind of, you're not maybe realistic. I just made a motion. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you said you motion. Yeah. Okay. 
or you make an motion to put the board budget forward as is. Yes. Okay. So we have a motion on the. I'm sorry, I didn't hear pitch the motion part. My apologies. So we have a motion on the on the table that we set forth this budget as proposed. Do I have a second? We, we can. Yep. So we have a motion on the table, but I don't hear a second. Or do I? No second at this point. All right, so let's continue the discussion. Any other thoughts? If we go to zero, no rate increase. We don't have to go to zero. Okay. But that means you've got to cut $1.4 million or something off this budget. Okay. Between the two different. All the three things. Okay. It could be. I know you're running two more percent, but I don't know if you have to I don't know what I want to say. I don't know what that all. I agree that 1.45 million. Mm -hmm. I can't even like, I can't comprehend it. I mean, I can, but I can't. Um, it's a huge increase, is what I'm trying to say. However, I did some math. If we pass the budget forward as I um, suggested, uh, the tax assessor, which all of our assessments are public record, the tax assessor put together a chart of the people that are on the board and uh, how much our taxes are going to go up. Ultimately, I don't know what my taxes are going up. Um, I'm the lowest paid person in this room, I guarantee it. My taxes are going to go up $9 a month. Uh, I'm not going to call out any names unless you want me to, but the, the numbers that are on this chart, 10 people, $13 a month, $15 a month, the highest one on here is $20 a month. These are the increases that, that we're arguing about. And that's if the budget goes forward, you know, as and I said this last year also, these people are asking for the money that they're asking for. I mean, I've been through these numbers. I mean, we just arbitrarily tell the town to cut 100000 Where are they supposed to, you know, get it from? I don't think a $10 um, a month increase in my taxes is going to kill me. I don't think it's going to kill you. I don't think it's going to kill anybody in this town. That's why I made the motion to... And I also think um, we did it last year. Let's go forward and really let's ask the town what they want to do. I don't know. Mr. Charwood asked us to make a to, to do our jobs, basically. But you want to just pass it forward and make the residents do it. So what are we even no. doing here then? I I don't know, Sean. I feel like I did my job. I did a lot of research. If we jump, if we if we. Um, Increase the mill rate by only a half. We still have to cut eight hundred and sixty-five thousand dollars. So if we make, if we pass the budget as proposed, we're increasing the mill rate by 0.88, and it comes out to like I said. Want to know how much this is? Don't matter. You just don't matter. All right. Any other thoughts? Yes, Ted. <coughs> If we have a zero mill increase, how much money do we collect from uh, overdue taxes and whatever for a total of an increase in the budget? We budget for that every year, back taxes. But on, but not only back taxes, we any should. other revenues like uh, line. That's in the budget for this, this year. That's in here. Okay, what is that total? So we've increased our building inspectors revenue by eight hundred thousand, and we increased planning and zoning by a hundred thousand. So nine hundred thousand more revenue in this budget. And forty yeah. from the or you tax. Are. So, so, so without an increase in the budget, we're coming up with nine hundred thousand. Yeah, roughly. Yep. Hey Teddy. And that, is that part of the budget? That's part of the budget. Yes, that you're looking at. Yes. Hey Teddy. That's nine hundred thousand. You're not going to have in the next budget. What's that? That's nine hundred thousand dollars. We won't have in the next budget. Any other thoughts? Yes, sir. 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 Yes, sir.
Any other thoughts? You've got to think ahead. What about the fund balance? What do we have then? We're roughly 17% right now. The audit is not completed, so I don't have an audit number for 2023. Dollars? But I calculated it'll be roughly 17%. What is that in dollars? Uh, hold on. A little less than two months of operation. It is, yes. Bond rating will go down too because you're using it for operation. Estimate 8.4 million. Pardon? Estimated, I estimate 8.4 million. 8.4 million. 8.4 million. Yes. So if we use that in this year's budget, we would we put, we'd have 8.4 million. Uh, uh, they're trying to save you more money. I can't take that. Uh, I don't recognize first of all, I can follow up on that. Um, while that might be an idea, I don't think it's a good idea, and I'll tell you why, Ted. You use money out of the fund balance at this time, and our Moody's rating could drop because you're using it for operational expenses. That's one of the things, the criteria that they look at. So we don't want to drop that because that means our interest rate for the bond that we're looking for later on is going to go up. So if it's not a great idea, I was just saying that. When you say it's going to go up, one percent, half a percent? We, we don't know that at this point. We, we, it's, it, you're going out for a bond in a couple of years, we don't know, but it definitely would be going higher. They, they frown upon those things when you're using operational costs for your fund balance. One million four hundred and fifty one thousand dollars point eight eight a mill increase. Any other questions or comments? Yeah, I wanted to another comment. Um, okay. Gary mentioned that we should be uh, looking ahead, planning ahead. And uh, we are losing um, police and an uh, inordinate rate. And everything the superintendent addressed about the schools, about um, it's going to cost us more money. If we, don't, if we don't take care of those kids now, we're going to lose them. And it's going to cost us more money to send those kids from here over there to get an education. We're responsible for their education, whether we do it here or there. So planning ahead would, in my opinion, be passing the budget proposal on to the down to see what the town wants. When we look at the $10, $12, $13 a month increase, we also have to look at the elderly, especially people that have just uh, lost a lot of income for various reasons. So it's not the average person that's working that's 25 to 45, 50 years old. It's 85 years old. $10, $12 a month? Yeah, that's a considerable amount. You're also doing the same thing with the young people. You're looking at the, the average worker who can spend whatever he wants. Which we, what, what, what we got to do, and I'm, I'm going to start working on, is after a, a person reaches a certain age, say me, okay? I'm a 10-year, let's say I'm a 10-year homeowner, live in my own home at 85, one of two things. I either don't pay any more taxes, or my taxes are stopped at that point. No increase. You gotta start looking for the elders. That was a program here, by the way, years ago. Well, why can't we resurrect that? And then you get the senior vote. But Ted, if we resurrect that, we still need money. So when you're talking about taking care of the seniors, the mill rate, the taxes are still gonna go up. They're just, they're going to have less people paying for them. I don't disagree. I'm a senior. I'm just, you know. It's okay. I'm always paying for them. But, uh,
you understand what I'm saying? Oh. If we give you a tax break and him a tax break and me, the town still has to run. So you're right. just taxing less people. Right. You're taxing less people, it's going to cost somebody more money. Yeah, and we're doing that now. We, we, we are though giving okay. seniors a break to some degree. And we've been running like that for the last 50 years. And it's not for anything. So we, it's not going to hurt anything. It's only $10 a month. How the hell can I hurt it? Hey, Linda, who's the largest employer in town? Honestly, I don't know. Town of Plainfield. Town of Plainfield. What, is there a point? Yeah, I don't know. Supporting the largest employer with a stand. Are we counting any income from, say, Uline? In the revenue line, if you take a look on the front page. And that's already in our budget? Yeah, you have $40,000 from the fire inspector permit fees. You have 800000 additional monies coming in from Uline in the uh, building permits. And in the planning and zoning, you have an additional 90000 Those are directly related to Uline. That's 930000 which good point, and a point was made over here, then you have to worry about next year, because those building permit fees and all of those fees is a one-time shot. That means next year we're 930000 in the hole to start off with with our budget. So without those numbers, it's already like a three-quarter mil increase without even thinking about the budget. In, in the past, the town has pretty much, without argument, uh, been able to suck up half a mil. Anything over half a mil, we never used to go. When we bring something to the town, if, no matter what, if let's just say we lower the um, the mill rate, we bring it to the town, they're not going to go no. You know, let's not lower the mill rate. But if we bring the budget forward, there's people out there that want us to spend money on the, on the school and on the police department and the pool. Uh, you know, there's what's, what's the current uh, on this paper today? What's the police department's increase? It's not, it's a negative. They're going down according to this table we've got today. We, we, still have a, we still have a public hearing to go before any vote. And we, and we can, and we have in fact make changes at the public hearing. That's great. You know, we can say whatever number now, but at the public hearing. So we you agree the number is it is?
It does not. It does not. No. And what would you um, project that savings to be? I put those projections together for the board. That's how I presented that. Can you go to Mike? Yes, please. Good evening. Uh, I put together the projections for the closure of the ECC for the board in the town. I shared them with the first selectman and I presented them at our last board of that meeting. We estimated that the, uh, um, the closure of the ECC on an annual basis uh, would be $300,000. That's what our savings are from the closure of the building. So we are projecting uh, that that would be the savings. Um, for the closure of ECC, I can outline what that would be. So that, that includes, uh, there's some personnel involved in that. Uh, there's a lot of uh, electrical power, um, same thing. Heat, other pieces like that. Uh, obviously, we wouldn't continue to do capital improvements on the building, uh, which is a large part of the well. And that has not been included in this projected budget? It has not been. No. So, Kelly, correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. We could reduce this by $300,000. Is that, would, yeah. that be, would that be a fair? The only problem, and pardon me, Board of Chair Christy Haskell, the only problem with reducing it by $300,000 is we do not have a definitive close date of that building yet. Okay. We have to move, there's going to be moving costs to moving the central office to outfitting any space, which is why the Board of Education was very cautious in that number. We obviously can move the preschool program this summer, but moving before the start of that budget year, you're talking moving data, you're talking moving files, you're talking, if you can't close once, especially since it's central office, there is a cost to it. Thank you. Personally, I believe that any type of savings, you will not get to year two because of that process. You might save 100000 I. I'm just very leery on any of that because we have to outfit a space. Thank you. Now, if that were to happen, where does that school go back to? Back on the town side, right? Uh, the building? Yeah. Uh, okay. if, if it's vacated, I believe it goes back to the town to require a board vote. Okay. okay. Do we have a game plan on what would happen to that? Yes. yes. So we won't move it, uh, whatever. Yes. Do you mind if I speak? Please. Um, it's been a long process to get to here. Um, I know that I did listen. I was able to make your meeting because it was the same night we had the uh, meeting here for the Board of Finance. I listened to the meeting. We were talking about the moving costs and how long it would take. The concern really is the IT moving over, make sure the payroll continues and the board's not continuous uh, process. Um, we would have the, at that time, the Board of Education has to have a formal vote to turn over the building to the Town of Plainfield. The Town of Plainfield already has a game plan to uh, continue on maintenance. We're going to review the building well prior to that. Uh, continue on maintenance and look to sell the pro property immediately. So I've already contacted a couple of realtors to give me some ideas of the cost. I've worked with the assessor to see how much the building is worth. Um, and we have some people who are already interested in the building. So that's, uh, that's the plan at this point. I did want to mention one other thing uh, that I listened to the meeting from the Board of Education. They were talking about the move and getting some ideas of how much it would cost. And that is a big factor because you want to know exactly how much it would cost. So uh, I do want to make this proposal. I'd like to talk to the superintendent and the Board of Education separately. Because I think there's a way that can be done and not have to worry about the impact of the new over at a certain time. And also not have to be something that's left on the books. I would like to talk to uh, the same three people who normally they talk together. And maybe include the chair people. Because I think there's a way that we can come back and say, give me an estimate for how much it's going to cost to move. Request those monies to come out of the fund balance now, and then you you will actually utilize and see your three hundred thousand dollars savings in next year's budget. So maybe we can make some time to actually sit down about that. Appreciate it. Something I've been in favor of for years. Uh, I've sat here a couple of years now, and what we do, we we, we accept these budgets. What are we going to do? We know we're going to cut them. So why the hell are we playing games? Next year, why don't we tell the school department, you can spend 40 million, that's it. Come into your budget, the 40 million, you got it. 
No time, you've got to spend 25 minutes. Come in under 25 minutes, that's it. Instead of playing games here, this is what we're doing. We know we've got to cut. And they know they've got to ask for more because they know we're going to cut. It, it, it don't, the game don't change. Let's be realistic. Next year, let's just tell them, here's what you can spend in the problem. And we can, it, it, it won't be an easy project to do that. Trust me, you'll fight like the devil to see how much you've got to spend. If we were to cut 300000 I'm just speaking, you know, what would that bring our new the no increase rate. of the mill rate to? 21.47. It would be 21.47, which means it would be a 0.68 increase. What would be the increase? 0 0.68. 0.66? 0.66 versus 0.88. 0.68. We got to get down over that. Got a half a shot at half a mil. Anything beyond that, I'm still at zero. They haven't gotten created yet. Just a point. Um, your number, your other paper, just to ignore that right now. But if you look at 1.45, cut that in half, yeah. that's your half mil. So it's really 725, 26,000. That's what you have to get down to if you really want to get to that half a mil number. You're not going to hurt any budget. Like I said before, they already came in anticipating a cut. They do that every year. Like I said, go zero, real easy.
Yes. I make a motion that we lower the board beds budget by three hundred thousand. Use the town's budget as proposed and send it to the uh, town for approval. All right. So we have a motion on the floor to reduce the budget by three hundred thousand dollars from the board of head. Um, and then we're going to put forward that budget with that change. Do I have a second? That would, that would have to be factored in at a later time because we'd have to go to the fund balance for that. Is that correct? Yes, that's not that's not part of it. That's okay. not part of that's not here. That's not part of operating. Of course. So Linda has put on the table a motion to send the uh, forward the budget with a three hundred thousand dollar reduction from the board of ed. Uh, do I have a second? I'm all right, Mr. Chairman. I okay. think you know what's happening. Okay. Say the words. Motion fails. Motion fails. Thank you. Thank you. Pension and 
Uh, as of right now, due to contract negotiations, I believe uh, First Selectman can uh, speak if I'm wrong, uh, he has it in contingency because that's a, a contract negotiation to be determined at a later time. Because I know that the budget you gave us a month ago was called for like $117,000 increase, was it? No. no that? It was the issue with the, again, contract negotiations. We pulled okay. those monies out and put it into contingency. Okay. If you take a look at each of the departments, anytime you find, like on the police pension, mm -hmm. it has the reduction in there, that's where the biggest number is for that reduction. Okay, sir. What's the fund balance for? Well, you use it for capital projects. I wouldn't touch the fund balance. Okay. That? I wouldn't touch the fund balance. Would you say we have two months of expenses, roughly? Yeah. How much? Two months. I was always taught to keep at least three of my savings yeah. account. Yeah. Right, well, you're talking to town now. But an emergency arises. We had that. Been, not been since the 60 years I've been in town. Then you go to the fund balance. Well, let's play the averages. We had that a few years ago. Wall Street was sending out early tax bills, hoping we'd pay to cover the town, so we could go. That's because they didn't want to use the fund balance. They but the, the fund balance was getting down. down. We were getting low. It was because yeah, education be cost share money wasn't coming in a timely manner. The state pushed back that payment. And, and we have a high cash flow going out July. July, that's a high cash flow, August, September. So I need money coming in. So if that education cost year, like money wasn't going to come in shortly, I was going to be short on paying expenditures. So and that's why he asked for that. So if I don't get tax money coming in July, I'm going to be short. There's a lot of payments going out in July. Including salaries. There'll be a bunch of people who will have trouble paying their taxes. So the taxes will become delinquent so we get extra money that way. Well, but yeah, but I need the money up front yeah, to pay yeah. the bills. How much we get the liquid so That's why you have a fund balance. So if right. I get taxes, the fund balance is a hundred thousand. Yes. Yeah. I understand that. What is our? What would be our new no rate if we reduce this budget by five hundred thousand dollars? So. Um, Twenty-five point three two. All right, which is what? Point five five. So, 500,000, it would be a difference, what do you ask? The difference between the current rate and the, okay. It would be a reduction of 0.53. 0.53. You know, you talk about the fund balance. Last year we got hit real hard, 20% increase. A 20% increase in your taxes is tantamount to three years worth of increase. Your taxes should never increase more than 7%. Now we're asking for more. So if we were to decrease this budget by $500,000, okay, the new mill rate would be an increase of 0.53 over last year. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, we know it is. 21.32. Thank you. What's the increase? Oh, that's okay. The increase would be 0.53 if we reduce this budget by $500,000. Brings the dollar increase to less than a million. Is that correct? What's that? It would bring the dollar increase in the budget to less than a million. 951. I think we might want to remember that last year we dropped the bill rate by seven points mm -hmm. to help the town get the reval. The reval, for three years prior, we were paying a lot less taxes than what our property was actually worth. We were getting a tax break for three years. So, you know, to ask, we still have the lowest mill rate in 
one of the lowest mill rates in the state. I mean, people, I mean, to sound cold, but people aren't going to leave if we increase their taxes by $20 a month. They're not going to put their house on the market and leave town. I mean, we need the money. Do we? Do we need the money? Did you read all this stuff, Sean? I could see a raise in here of $18,000. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> the rec director. Yeah. I don't know how we're going to do it. But we can't tell the town to cut the budget by $18,000 and take it away from the rec director. I mean, I'm not saying to cut it by eighteen. dollars well, I'm, I'm just saying, saying no zero. Well, I don't think zero is realistic because you still got to turn on the lights, you got to plow the roads. We're still going to turn on the lights and plow the roads. Right. We're just going to get rid of the fall. Yeah. I, I think that we are closing in on a number here. If we reduce this budget by $500,000, we make our increase 0.53. And I think that that is something that we were all kind of thinking about in the first place. Half a million. Right about that. I don't think that's right. I don't think we're all looking at an increase. I think we're all looking at a zero mill. And so, in my opinion, you're raising it five more than Sean and I want it to be. At least, at least two of us. So we're not all looking at raising it a high, uh, half a mill. We're talking for the people here, guys. Remember, we're talking for the people. You gotta have the courage. And you got to keep the ball at the top. Well, I don't think a zero What's it? increase is going to work. What's it look like if we cut the school by a million dollars? A 7-Eleven increase. We cut the school by a million? They want a million seven, right? They've always, historically, it seems like they were close to about We got about a million. Cut, cut the school by one million and cut the town by two hundred thousand. Let's be real. That yeah, sounds let's good. be real. Good. That sounds real. No, I'm not agreeing. I'm disagreeing when I say let's be real. Well, we can start having a discussion. The percentages, the percentages are out of whack. The percentages are out of whack. Historically, the town would take a lot more of that than the Board of Ed. If you look, go back and look at your numbers. Um, it's just... Ted was arguing for 0.5 the whole time. No, we come to no I was arguing zero. I said was, um, has traditionally done that. But I'm at zero. Would, would you would understand me? I'm at zero. Yeah. 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 I don't think we're being realistic. We got I, don't think, I don't think cutting a million from the school is being realistic. It's a starting point. Okay. That's your starting point. We get, but I don't think it's realistic. Uh, I hear what you're saying, and, and I kind of get it, but I, I don't think it's realistic. So we have to come up with a realistic number. And I think if we go to 500,000 or somewhere around there, uh, we get ourselves to a 0.53 mill rate increase, which I think is something that we can present to the public. I'll make another motion. Do I have a limit on the number of motions I can no, make? No, no. We still want all night long. Okay, 0.53. What now? 0.53? Is that what we're talking about? It's a $500,000 reduction. Yeah. To bring it to 0.53 mil rate increase. Yeah, 0.53 mil increase. But I, I think 75% should come from the Board of Ed and 25% from the town. That was a motion. Board of Ed. 
What's that? Why should more come from the board of ed? Um, typically, they, they, the ratio of the budget. They're, they're, they're proportionate to the budget. That was a motion. All right, we have a motion on the on the floor for a five hundred thousand dollar reduction to bring the mill rate increase to 0.53 with seventy five percent of the cut reduction coming from the board of ed and twenty five percent coming from the town. Do I have a second? I'll second that. All right, we have a second made by Stephanie. Motion was made by Linda. Any other questions or comments? Not so, okay. so Two hundred thousand will come from the town, and three hundred thousand from the board. That it'll be a five hundred thousand. No. no, it would be it's, if it's a seventy-five twenty-five, three seventy-five from the school, one twenty-five from the town. All right. So we have a motion on the floor, seconded. Any other questions or comments? All right. All those in favor of the motion on the table of $500,000 from the original budget to bring us to a 0.53 mil increase, $375,000 coming from the school, $125,000 coming from the town. All those in favor signify by saying, by raising your right hand. All those opposed? All right, this motion carries. That sounds very political to me. Unbelievable. You guys ought to be ashamed of yourselves. You got all Republicans voting one way or the other. This is unreal. This board needs something different. I don't know what we've got to do. We've got to change something. You can't be political. There's no reason we all have to sit together. I don't think it was political. It definitely was. The way we thought. Come on, definitely you know that. Well, I disagree. All right. With that, I will look for a motion to adjourn. So moved. We have a motion to adjourn made by Lynn. Do I have a second? No second. I'm still waiting for a second on the motion to adjourn. We're not adjourned. On the floor to adjourn, made by Lynn, seconded by Stephanie. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Abstain? All right.